Welcome back to Megan's channel. Please remember to subscribe, like, and what? What's the the other one? All right, are you ready to go viral? Let's do it. Oh, by the way, I have I have one thousand subscribers now. Congrats! Thank you. Best birthday present ever. <laughs> Okay, can you can you introduce yourself to the fans? Hi, Megan's fans. Uh, my name is Song. I'm his mentor here at Merck. So, what did you study in undergrad, and what did you study in your PhD before you came to Merck? Well, that's a long story actually because I'm pretty old and um, like my undergrad is a pretty long time ago. So actually I started um, my undergrad majored in computer science and what's funny is that at that time I never had a computer or I never actually used a computer. So <laughs> what I experienced at that time when everyone is learning what like C++, I was just learning how to type. <laughs> but I think everything goes well. I, I did learn how to type pretty fast and finish all the courses pretty nicely. But I think it's more enjoyable to switch uh, my major to chemistry, which I always enjoyed since middle school. Then like after my undergrad, I came here to UCLA as a PhD student. Even then, I wasn't doing anything related to computational chemistry for the first two years. To find out what was my true research interest, I talked to quite a lot of professors within chemistry department, and I find Professor Hogg's group is very interesting, and what they are doing is very cool. He's very nice, and he took me uh, like at the end of my second year, and that's how I get started in computational chemistry and then from there I get into um, Merck as a senior scientist. Okay, first question. What is your honest opinion of my YouTube channel? I think it's awesome. It's a, a interesting way to like record your daily life and also do science education at the same time. Oh yeah. So I think I see a future BNI. <laughs> Did you watch them before I started at Merck or after? <laughs> oh, I watched them after. I didn't know you have a YouTube channel before you got started. Oh my god! Okay, next question. How much of a headache do you get from mentoring me? <laughs> wow, that's a tough one. Well, I think you're, you're doing great. I do have headaches, um, but it's mainly from my side. I'm like trying to think what I can do better to be your mentor. And you, you're doing great in the summer project you're helping us a lot but i also want you to get something out of this experience wow i'm surprised <laughs> i ask you so many questions all the time that's a good thing you should ask you should always ask questions if you have them so how would you describe computational chemistry to someone who doesn't know a lot about the field you can think of us as some kind of detective like holmes <laughs> using computational technology and uh, methods to solve cases and all those cases are at molecular levels and the cases we usually take are how one molecule attack another molecule in a chemical reaction i'm trying to make them sound like uh, like murder cases but yeah <laughs> um, for the modeling part is more like how do you let the numbers play like molecules right you can use different softwares to visualize the protein structure, the uh, small molecule, but it's not a real molecule in your computer. Those are just the numbers, they're 3D coordinates. And the modeling is starting from this, starting from these numbers. Can you make those numbers uh, behave like molecules and then uh, reproduce the whole process that happened in reality and using that as kind of guideline for whatever happened in the lab. We don't have like the informatics part. So in that part, in that side, you can think of us as weather forecasters. Ew! It's not like the weather forecast we have nowadays, which is super accurate and reliable. We are more like the weather forecast in the like mid 20th century and the way we want to do weather forecast in, in molecular level is to gather 
the data, you are not dealing with a single case, you are dealing with a large number of molecules, and then turn the molecules uh, into numeric representations. And you, it can be molecular fingerprints, it can be a bunch of descriptors, or it can be a graph. From there, you can build different models and try to predict whether the next molecule is a good one or bad one. Give me one second. What's that? <laughs> so you said the modeling aspect is like Sherlock Holmes and then the informatics part is like weather forecasting. Yeah, I like that analogy. So what kind of problems can computational chemistry solve? So like, what are the applications? Actually quite a lot. So I would say almost every branch of chemistry would use a little bit of comp cam. <laughs> So for medicinal chemistry, it is structure-based drug discovery. Using docking, you can guess how a small molecule may bind in the pocket that you are interested. And more accurately, if you have the structure with the molecule inside, you can use free energy method and predict more accurately what's the free energy change if you add a functional group at a certain side of your molecule. So for informatics side, you have traditional QSAR models to predict all kinds of bioactivities, the toxicities and on-target and off-target activities. Like in organic chemistry, right, it has been pretty um, powerful to use ComChem to illustrate the mechanism behind the chemical reactions and try to predict what kind of approach, what kind of reagents will be able to improve the reaction output. Okay, nice. What subjects would you say computational chemistry is based on? Because I got some questions or like emails and comments saying that they want to get into computational chemistry, but they see a lot of quantum mechanics is involved. Well, no. So would you say there's a lot of quantum mechanics in computational chemistry and if so, are there other subjects that are also involved? QM, like quantum mechanics, is one area of computational chemistry and still like most reliable, most accurate way to model the molecule systems. You can start learning some of the other computational technologies like MD, molecular dynamics, which is all classic mechanics. You can take some courses like statistic mechanics. It's most important is if you are really interested in computational chemistry, you should know the theories be underneath it so not just the theory behind the computational part but the theory behind chemistry so if you are very interested in the organic chemistry part so definitely take those courses physical chemistry is very important in terms of the connection between physics and chemistry i feel like computational chemistry is kind of random or like it's kind of niche like i don't think any any undergrad like going into undergrad knows that oh i want to study computational chemistry. I think it's more of you're interested in computer science and then you realize you're also interested in chemistry and then you realize that you can use the power of computers to solve scientific problems. And then yeah, that, I think that's how I got into it. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need to explore a little bit before you can find what you are really interested in. I think definitely as a freshman in college or like even a sophomore, if I heard computational chemistry, I would probably just say, ew, what is that? <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to learn more about that. Okay, so yeah, the last part of this video is giving advice to people who want to learn more about computational chemistry or get started. So what are some resources that people can use to learn more? You can try to start with uh, visualizing molecules using some uh, kind of online scratches of molecules. You can using op open source packages like for chem informatics, you have Articate. For modern part, you have Pymo, you have the Chimera from UCSF. Those are pretty good uh, softwares you can get online. And, and they are open source to academic users. You are lucky you, you can find a research group to join. Of course, you can just get started in that way. Even if you are just an undergrad, right? You can do some kind of uh, research, even just for a summer, it will get you started in the field. And then from there, you can decide whether you want to go deeper or not. Programming is, is an essential skill. Uh, you don't have to be really good at it from the very start. I, I think you can like learn programming in the process of 
of becoming a computational chemist. The other thing I would suggest is always keep a good uh, habit of keeping your data clean, keeping all your results clean. That's important because later on you will have to find ways to reproduce your results. It will save you a lot of time and efforts if you can keep it organized from the very beginning. So the other skill is now related to kind of all the hard skills. The other thing is communication because for computational chemists, because of the nature of our field, you have to collaborate a lot with people from wet lab, with biologists, with chem wet chemists, and extremely com important for us to understand what they really need and also deliver your results uh, in a clear and understandable way. I like that. So hard skills and soft skills. <laughs> What do you think is the future of computational chemistry? Uh, the future of computational chemistry is also you. Ew! Right, you guys who just get started and are interested in computational chemistry. Oh, I like that. So the future of computational chemistry is whoever's watching this video. <laughs> But I do hope the future of computational chemistry will become even more powerful and even more broadly used and with the help of machine learning. And I think we, we can see it's starting to happen now, right? With machine learning is finding alternative ways to carry out the simulations, the modeling we did before. With machine learning, it's able to achieve either better accuracy or achieves the same accuracy, but within a much shorter of time and and computational resources. It's also transforming the field by taking on the task which usually uh, requests many years of experience and expertise. Like for drug design, for molecule design, you definitely need a lot of uh, experience as medicinal chemists to have the insight or experience to come up with good designs. But machine learning is trying to design molecules just based on the known drug molecules and their properties. It's not as good as uh, a very experienced medicinal chemist yet, but it's getting there. It definitely needs more improvement. I hope it will become the main method that will be used. It'll be interesting because like say you give it a couple of years, I wonder what the space on YouTube will be for computational chemistry. I'm also curious what your future guests in this YouTube channel would have to say. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting my channel. I hope you guys had fun watching this video and also learned a little bit more about computational chemistry. I know I did. I just want to plug that the internship applications for a computational chemistry research internship at Merck for 2021 are now open. Feel free to use the promo code. I am a big fan of Megan's YouTube channel when submitting your application in order to bypass the resume screening and guarantee an interview. If you can't tell, I merely jest. But in all seriousness, if you are interested in a computational chemistry research internship, I highly encourage you to apply. The Merck program is super awesome and you will have the awesome opportunity to work with awesome mentors such as the one featured in this video. As usual, stay safe, stay healthy, Stay positive and I'll see you very soon. Megan, signing off.